Hello everybody, welcome back to another First Impressions. My name's Orthodox, this is my guest, Remy, and uh, he's hanging out in the lap. He's getting his cuddle time in, so we're going to go ahead and uh, oh, big yawn from you. We're going to do our recording, and uh, we're going to see what these new units are all about. Yes, thank you very much, I love you too. And uh, yeah, if this helps you guys out, obviously as always, like, comment, subscribe. Let me know if you guys are going to be pulling on these units. Um, Again, this is my first impression, so I'm going to be running through it with you guys for the first time. We got two new units on the list. We got Saiga, who is a wind close range mana caster. We also have a five star variant of Yachio, which is a flame blade this time around. So, definitely with the wind flame combination right away, makes me think this is for Yaldabaoth. Uh, but we shall see. So, yeah, starting right into it, we have Saiga which is the wind close range mana caster. His first skill, Dirge Shot, is shareable, seven cost, deals damage to enemies directly ahead, inflicts Storm Lash, and when used directly next to foes, oh, careful there buddy, grants the user enemy insight effect. Enemy insight is three levels. When enemy insight level three is active, it consumes en enemy insight level three, deals damage to enemies directly ahead, and inflicts Storm Lash. Stormlash foes will take extra damage. Okay, so pretty traditional here. Uh, looks like every third shot of it is going to go ahead and do Stormlash for us. We can take a look to see here what the changes are going to be. So damage 225, 5 hits. Skill energy required. Wow, it's actually pretty high. 4,000 SP cost. Um... Interesting. Okay, and the share cost is actually pretty low at 5,100. So, pretty good if you're looking for a shared skill for Stormlash application. Obviously, the, the competition you're looking at is Formal Joaquin. Um, and then after the skill change, you have... So, 2,000 total damage. 4 times 5 hits. Skill energy required 4,080. Same, same, same. Stormlash, and then of course your damage modifier is 120%. Okay, so overall we'll have to see more of his kit to see the usability for this. Obviously share cost 7 is pretty hefty, um, but uh, it's a pretty low cost Stormlash application, so there might be some value in this here as a share. I'm not terribly impressed with it, but we'll see the rest of the kit to see what else we can get from his kit. So we have Karmic Quietus. Uh, dispels one buff from multiple targets, grants the user enemy insight effect. Okay, this skill will only affect each target once per use. So again, here we have another enemy insight. This is from his skill. So now it's alternating, right? Every other cast in a paired rotation. So S1, S2, S1. That would give you the third level. Interesting. Okay. When enemy insight level 3 is active, consumes enemy insight level 3, dispels one buff from multiple targets, and grants the user calculated shots effect. This skill will only affect each target once per use. Okay, so we'll have to see what calculated shots does. Uh, the small iteration is dispelling a buff and enemy insight. And then, of course, after the skill change, we have access to calculated shots, which lasts for 30 seconds. So, ideally, because this, this buff right here looks like it's a unique buff, right? Calculated shots most likely will not be uh, affected by Nihility, but we're going to have to see uh, if it is or is not. And, of course, what even it does. Okay, so co-ability and chain co-ability, pretty standard. Gauge accelerator standard across the mana casters, and then you have the uh, above 10 hits equals water res. Fairly decent. Nothing too special here. Uh, let's look at the abilities. First one, Know Thine Enemy 2. When enemy insight level 3 is active, increase the amount the user's next 4 strike lowers the mode gauge by 300%. This 4 strike will consume enemy insight level 3. Hmm. Okay, so you have a rotation where you can get your insights through skills, and then you have each skill and Saiga's Force Strike, which also has an oh, excuse you. Um, also, when the calculated shots effect is active, increase the power of standard attacks by 10%. 
the amount skill gauges are filled by standard attacks by 10%, and the critical rate. That's pretty good. So definitely playing into uh, the close range, rapid fire style, where, <laughs> as, as I like to say for these units, they're the, uh, the arthritis units. So definitely going to be a lot of tapping on your screen. So freeze res and HP 70 equals 13% strength to round out the kit. Okay, so definitely not a terribly in-depth kit. Um, there's definitely some play styles that you can switch up here, which is pretty cool. Uh, obviously, you can go as a Stormlash uh, Punisher and Inflictor in the Dirge Shot if you're just going for damage. Um, it seems to be the case, though, that you would really want to get that level 3 iteration for Calculated Shots off. And then, oh, you're going to take off, buddy, or are you going to hang around? Oh, okay. Everyone say goodbye to Rem. <laughs> Till next time, buddy, okay? Let's see. Yeah, so overall, um, it seems like you want to get that rotation in. You want to get that S2 going uh, for calculated shots. And then once you have that buff, I would imagine the majority of those bonuses would either go towards S1 for the Stormlash bonus, or if you're looking to break soon. 300% mode gauge is pretty darn strong, so putting a shared skill like Hunter Cerise's shared skill on Saiga um, and just further powering up how much damage your four strike can do could be pretty darn good. So, yeah, we'll have to see. Um, overall, the short range, close range mana casters haven't been terribly impressive thus far. Um, so, you know, I'm not sure how I feel about it. Uh, obviously, 300% of the mode gauge is pretty darn strong, so if you're looking at like Legend Cielo, for example, and you're having trouble breaking that, uh, you know, overdrive bar in her berserk state. Saiga might be the answer to that. He really might be the answer to that. So we'll definitely have to uh, keep our eye on him. I think overall, what's going to happen is going to need to see some play tests with him before I can make a judgment call on on his kit. But overall, I mean. It seems like there's a, there's a decent amount of fluidity in his kit uh, between the enemy insight uh, stacking effect um, as well as you know getting access to calculated shots, which looks like it could be a lot of fun. All right, so moving on to our next adventure, we have Yachio's alt, which is armored Yachio, flame blade, which is pretty cool, and uh, her first skill is. Peerless Eternity activates Peerless Flourish. The user's next three four strikes are powered up, and they deal extra damage to Scorch Red foes. So the cost of the skill is 2700, pretty standard give or take, and then you have three charges of Peerless Flourish. Now hopefully again, this is something that's not affected by Nihility, um, and obviously having a damage, uh, extra damage to Scorch Red foes is pretty nice considering that Galia Nidus is running rampant all throughout uh, the new fight, Yaldabaoth. So, yeah, definitely nice there. Um, also, you know, the four strike playstyle of Blade is pretty fun. So if it, if it stays mobile with her, um, <laughs> it's probably going to be pretty fun. So now we can look at her skill two, Blossom Dance. It's her shareable skill, cost five. Deals damage to enemies directly ahead. Inflicts Scorch Rend. Grants the user immunity to knockback. Okay. Uh, so this is our second shareable skill that has immunity to knockback. The first one being Vanessa. Uh, so that's pretty good. And then we got six hits of 165. One hit of 523. And then three hits of 267. So that's not a terribly strong hit. Um, it's a little bit over 2,000 right so actually a little bit yeah yeah a little bit a little bit over um you know the cost of energy requirements actually pretty low uh 5460 is not, not bad uh the shared cost is a little high with 10,000 but you do have score trend application and you do have knockback immunity for 15 seconds so those two things are pretty good um you know, obviously you want to be able to use Scorch Rend in the new fight as 
there is no resistance to it. Uh, whereas with burn, uh, Yaldabaoth starts with about like 60 some percent uh, resistance, so burn can cap pretty quickly. As far as her co-abilities go, standard strength co-ability for blade. Uh, for the chain co-ability, however, we have flame scorch rend equals win res plus 8%. So, pretty standard. This is kind of like the burn variant of it, where it was burn equals win res, uh, except now when you inflict, uh, you know, Scorch Rend, of course, the, the unit is going to uh, reduce the wind damage taken by 8% for 15 seconds. So, that's pretty good. And, of course, uh, you know, there is a 5 second overlap window, so there is a chance that if you're inflicting Scorch Rend <laughs> rather often, you could make it 16% win res. Um, so I, I guess there's that right in there, making it a little bit better than the 10 hits equals win res. So yeah, moving on to her abilities, uh, Unrelenting Blade 2 uh, increases strength by 20% for every 15 seconds that pass without the user being knocked back by an enemy. Uh, this buff can stack. Okay, so this is basically Kirsty's uh, ability, right? So uh, increasing strength by 20% for 15 seconds, basically three times. So in a 45 second window, if you've not been knocked back, you can get 60% strength in this ability. Um, it's pretty nice. Uh, obviously you have, you know, prevention of knockback in your skill two, uh, and you do have iframes in your roll. Um, and also grants the user a unique force strike that has two increasingly powerful levels. Uh, dispels one enemy buff when the combo count is 15 or higher. And uh, the user will be immune to knockback while charging this force strike. Okay, so you have on command immunity to knockback by making this, uh, if you just by holding your force strike. So, technically speaking, um, this iteration of the Dauntless Strength, as it's called in Kirsty's ability, uh, is pretty foolproof. Um, anytime you see an attack coming in, Realistically, you could probably just hold your force strike, and that should keep your stacks, as you won't be knocked back. Um, additionally, this is our permanent pool solution to Nobunaga, right? Uh, you know, you have a dispel, uh, which is uh, <laughs> going to happen on your force strike when your combo counts 15 or higher. That was originally unique to Nobunaga. Um, so now these two abilities uh, from Kirsty and Nobunaga have seemingly fused into Yachio. And then of course rounding out her kit we have stun res 100% and force strike 50%. Um, so yeah, I mean the only thing that I see here that, that, that could be problematic is uh, Yaldabaoth does do sleep uh, affliction. So even though you won't be knocked back from the four strike charge the fact that yachio is not sleep res means that if he does hit her with certain attacks um, she can still go to sleep which then could lead into a future knockback um, or a prevention of her being able to get her four strike off so i think the key here with her kit is going to be what this unique four strike actually looks like um, if it's slow like linnea there could be some problems, although having a massive AoE force strike could be fairly useful for clearing out mobs. Um, so there's definitely some trade-off there. If it's quick, however, like Nobunaga's, it's going to be easy to get off, and it's going to be easy for her to keep um, her stacks. So, yeah, um, you know, the fact of the matter is, the fact that she's called Armored, Yachio, right, with this design, um, would make me think that the four strike would be a little bit slower in nature, maybe have a large AoE range like Linnea, um, but uh, we'll have to see. We'll have to see what, uh, you know, we end up getting on it, so. I think overall, though, it, you know, if you're struggling with the new Dominion fight, this banner as a whole is definitely catering to that. Um, you have, obviously, a new flame option with Yaichio, who also has a dispel, right? Um, a lot of people were saying in that fight, if you didn't have Glio or Gleon, um, and you didn't have uh, access to Nobunaga, uh, you weren't able to dispel enough or you weren't, weren't able to clear the fight. So this seems to be the permanent pool solution uh, for not having Nobunaga. 
in, in, the, in the fight. Um, she's definitely looks pretty good. I think the one thing, too, I want to see is what the modifiers actually look like on this skill one. Um, I want to see how much the Force Strike is powered up. So that would be nice to see uh, as well. So three charges is pretty darn good, right? Three charges for that. Um, also want to see what our SP generation looks like for this unique four strike. Unique four strikes always have unique damage modifiers and they also have a unique SP generation. So that's going to determine whether or not, what kind of shared skills are going to be good for her. Um, so yeah, uh, and then of course, you know, we do also have Gala Leaf on the banner, which kind of furthers that notion for powering up your wind team, powering up your flame team um, for Yaldabaoth, uh, and of course, Legend Ciela, uh, things like that. So yeah, I mean, overall, uh, you know, he is, is a remix rerun. He has a very unique kit in the fact that he can change stances. Uh, very fun kit overall. Um, but uh, yeah, and then... <laughs> I guess we can re briefly touch on this. Reborn Zephyr also makes it onto the banner uh, as well. Uh, this dragon actually evaded me the first time that I went through to pull him. He is very, very good. Otherwise, you know, without him, you're stuck with uh, high skill damage dragons like Mid-Zero and Zephyr. Or, uh, not Zephyr, my apologies. Uh, Vayu, right? So, yeah, if you don't have Zephyr, then you're stuck with skill damage dragons. In this case, though, um, this iteration of Zephyr has even more strength. And of course, the modifier uh, for additional damage against water and human enemies. So, I don't think either one, uh, Leaf nor uh, Reborn Zephyr, is a guaranteed pull or desire for to pull these characters. Um, they're definitely nice to have, but if you have Mid Zero or um, if you have Galaranzel. Um, then of course those units can happily do their job um, and possibly even do the job better. So yeah, final verdict on this. Um, I don't think I'll be summoning on this myself. The character designs and the aesthetics are very great. I really like both Saiga and Armor Diaccio's uh, appearances. But um, considering myself, you know, I, I do have Nobunaga, I do have Gal Leonidas. Um, so these solutions or options are not specifically for my account. Uh, however, for your guys' account, if you don't have a Nobunaga and if you are struggling on the flame side of things, uh, Armored Yaichio may be the solution for you. Obviously, I would wait and see to see uh, till we get more animation details on her kit, possibly even SP generation to see uh, you know, the total power of her kit. It's hard to assess right now, right, because of how many unique mechanics she has in the kit. Additionally, uh, with Saiga, um, he's probably going to be pretty good for what he's going to do, which is which is right here, <laughs> which is breaking the the uh, the Berserk state for for Legend Ciela. So uh, that's where I would hone in for him. Uh, so if you, if you're having trouble with Legend Ciela and, and you know you get, you're getting to that Berserk state but you can't seem to beat her uh, or you're timing out, this is definitely the solution for that. And uh, overall, his kit looks pretty good. So yeah, that about does it for today, guys. Um, let me know if you guys are planning on pulling in the comments below, uh, or of course, which unit you think is going to be, well, better than the other. If, do you think Saiga is the prize of the banner? Do you think Armored Yaichi is the prize? Or, or do you think that one of the Gala Remix rerun units uh, is the true chase unit? And uh, yeah, don't forget to subscribe. Click the like button if that video or my discussion here has helped you guys out, and uh, I'll see you guys next time. Bye!